This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 24, on the 28th of August 2013, an interview with Adam Perry, CEO at Banda. And the DMT One to One Show this week is sponsored by Sheridans at sheridans.co.uk. This is the DMT One to One Show, and it's great this week to have Adam Perry on from Banda App. And hi, Adam, and great to have you on the show. How's it going today? Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, not bad. Good to be here. Yeah, nice to uh, be back. We've been at Reading Festival all weekend, so it's nice to be back behind the desk. That's awesome. And you, you also, you, you, you've been on tour for the past uh, sort of month and a half, so uh, it, it's yes. taken us a while to, to catch up, but it's awesome to have you on. And uh, we're going to talk about Band App today, and there's lots, lots to talk about, essentially. So first of all, uh, I, I don't believe I've had you on the show before. So first of all, uh, talk us through what Band App is and what the general idea of the, of the company is. Okay, yeah. Well, Band App is essentially, it's a, it's a tool, uh, platform for bands to go make an app for free. So whether you're an app, a, a venue, or an artist, or a DJ, or a festival, you can go into bandapp.com and you can make a, an app instantly for free, yeah. and then share it for free to your fans in minutes. So, and, and the whole idea was, just, you know, from a musician background and being on tour a lot and seeing how fans communicate with bands, and also seeing the bottlenecks that are potentially App Store where there, there may be a fee involved, there may be a three-week delay involved, yeah. and then fans have got to go and go through the app store, and you know, you're bombarded with LinkedIn and Angry Birds and all kinds of cool stuff, but <laughs> for, for music apps, they're sort of lost. Yeah. So the idea was to create our own space, our own platform, our own store, so we should make your band app, it sits with like-minded bands not with other apps that don't really have anything to do with the music space. Exactly. And, and one of the big things about Band App is also the community c- you create around all the different artist apps. So it means that if I go and check out a, a, you know, a, a, an alternative rock band, then I might be presented with other alternative rock band apps that I might want to go and check out. And so, so that's really a, a key part of be- being able to make these apps discoverable for music fans, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think we're, you know, the, one of the things we, we sort of say on our, on our splash page is that, you know, you can go and you can find new fans and you can build an app for free and, and people can explore your content. And that's what we're really making big inroads into this year is making that even better so that once you've made your band app, it just doesn't sit there. People yeah. can discover it. And um, so within every band app, you've got the explore button. But when you go to explore, like-minded band apps appear and you'll very soon be able, from today, you can add those to your record box. So if you're a fan, you can create a record box, which is essentially just like bookmarks of your favorite band apps that you can spring around to. Um, and so you can add a band to your record box or you can open the app. Um, and then there's a whole activity wall so people know if you've added it to your record box, it shows up in their activity and people can follow you. So we just, we just brought on board today followers and following for yeah. the first time uh, and also activity for the first time. So that's it's very infant stage today but that's something we're, we've been working on for six six months now to really hone down the fan side of it but we, we think the platform for bands is is pretty good it's a good offering it's free you can make an app for free and off you go but the fan side of it needed some work and that's what we've been doing now and they're all kind of coming together yeah in a big collage a big collage that's great yeah. and uh, so talking about uh, the technology side of things uh, how has you have you seen the html5 uh, uh, sort of adoption and implementation evolve. Uh, you know, I know that there were some kinks at the beginning, especially. Uh, yeah. Some companies have found that HTML5 wasn't powerful enough for them, or for example, uh, Facebook went and rewrote their whole native app uh, mm-hmm. into into native iOS language because it wasn't fast enough uh, for their users. Uh, but for an application like this, it seems like a great solution. Uh, at the same time, you know, have, have you seen the adoption of HTML5 apps uh, and also the technology evolve alongside that? I think there's a, there's a little bit of a learning curve, a little bit of education to be done for, for users. You yeah. always get someone that's going to go, this isn't an app, it's a website, you know, and that's that's social media for you. So we have to, every now and again, we probably get one a month. We don't get an awful lot of that. Yeah. But, so there's a little bit of education. But, you know, we, I think the speed of the apps work really well. Um, yeah. We've got our offline mode now, which we had to do for festivals. So the key part of your content sits offline and caches to the phone. Yeah. So it's not just about speed of Wi-Fi or 3 or 4G. You can use it on a plane, um, which is really good for That's concerts awesome. and for festivals. And we've, we've spent a lot of time honing that down. It works It works well for Band App. It's not going to work well for everyone, and I can see why Facebook had problems. But having said that, if we ever do go the native route, it will never will be for Band Apps. Band Apps will always stay as an HTML5, but... We may do a native kind of band app explore mothership app at some yeah. point that yeah. brings all this stuff together. But we'll be—I think—we'll be really grateful. We've, we've always had that HTML5 stepping stone. 
yeah. uh, because I think you need it, you know, to you, you can't just drive someone straight to an A back. All you can do is drive them to an app store. And then it's up to them whether they download it or not. They may not have an iTunes account, they may not have a credit card to get an iTunes account. And um, so it's you know it's really important for us that we are HTML5 and that back apps can be created instantly and shared and, and um, downloaded instantly. And uh, as we were saying before, we I think we um we just got to start some Reading Festival. So we did the, the app for Reading this year. And yeah, 21,000 downloads of that um, just from that one weekend, just at one festival, uh, which is way more than the native app last year. Yeah. So it, it shows you the behavior patterns. Are, you know, the, the, when we're not changing behavior, people are used to sharing links and downloading links and, and bookmarking and, 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 and it seems fine. So yeah, it's, it's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a speed issue. And um, I think if you're Facebook, Obviously, there is going to be a big speed issue. You've got so much data, yeah. but for us at this point, it's absolutely fine. And yeah. the new versions of, uh, you know, the new versions of software we're using to make band apps are increasing in speed all the time, and um, so it's only going to get better. Yeah, and uh, looking at the uh, uh, reading, you were talking about that. Uh, so, did you have any correlations with, for example, bands that uh, have band app apps, and whether that had an effect on 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 their downloads and stuff like that? Yeah, we did. early days, but you know, <laughs> it's yeah, we did. I think one of the things we can do do a better job with is um, we we like Band App to become the place that you submit all your artist information to a festival. Yeah. From, so you use uh, you know a, a kind of white label landing page for say a festival like you know Glastonbury or whatever or Reading and Leeds or Team the Park, and the promoter needs basic information. You know, it needs a biography, it needs an iTunes link, it needs a YouTube link. Uh, it needs your Twitter page, you know, your Twitter account, stuff like that, so they can go and market your band. Yeah. Recent JPEG. Well, you know, Band App Builder asks you all those things, so it could become a really good gateway into supplying information to our to um, promoters that they need to market artists on their behalf. Yeah. And then the artist can choose whether to go and build a full Band App or just submit some of his information. And we can do a better job with that next year in the festival circuit. We will do. Having said that, we lots of bands at Reading this year already have Band Apps. And they're the bands we've been interviewing. So we've been taking our time out every day to have content on Band App TV from our Band App bands who are there. And yeah, there was about 15 a day that we were doing. So yeah, and those bands are getting bigger and bigger. And as we start going to doing the deals with record labels, which is just about to start, they will get you know enor enormous. So that's yeah, awesome. that's, that's not going to be a problem for us. I think you know most people have seen it so far. You know, like okay, let's go. You know, let's let's start building Band Apps and. Um, um, it's, it's kind of us that are putting the barriers on that bit because we, we're about to launch version two. Yeah. So we just want to make sure V2's out and, and looking good, and then we're going to go health and leather with, with kind of major, major label artists as well. Yeah. And I guess like uh, also the other benefit with the HTML5 is that you can gauge the effectiveness of an app pretty quickly. <laughs> so if a big band wanted to try out their server, your service, you know, okay, they might, you know, misdirect their fans for a bit if they see that it's not working but you know if they see it's working then in two weeks they've created something that is creating a whole new community so that's uh, that's quite exciting instead of having to wait months for develop yeah. development or anything like that yeah so it's great for artists that can do that you know, they can you can dive back in and the new version band app they can dive back in on the phone as well so you can edit your band app on the go yeah um which is going to be really important but it's also great for us as, 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 a, as a business because we you know we can introduce features all the time and see within minutes whether they're working or pull them or expand them or iterate them. Yeah. And people don't really even know, but we're just, we're just constantly updating and iterating throughout the feature set. And um, it's really hard to do that if you've got a native app. You've got con people have got to constantly update it. And, you know, we band app as soon as we push anything live, it, it, everyone updates. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's great for us launching new products like Recordbox, which we're about to launch, um, you know, like, but things like that are invaluable that we can just get in there and test the water. You know within five minutes whether it's going to work or whether you need to tweak something, Yeah. Um, but you're not handcuffed to updates. Yeah, sure. And also, uh, talking about uh, third-party um, integrations, uh, I, I wanted to ask you, you know, it's always important for an app like BandApp to be fairly uh, linear and simple in the way that bands set up uh, their... Uh, you know the, the whole application and the process, and and not make it too cluttered. At the same time, I'm sure bands want more and more uh, third-party apps or uh, services to be integrated within the band app. You know, going from the simplest one like Twitter to stuff like Pinterest or wh whatever else you know they may be using on, yes. on the social media front. So, how do you decide what you integrate and what you don't integrate into the service? Um, I think we well, one of the benefits we have is that we're all from a music background, 
Um, yeah. So hopefully it's part of the team. But it's, it, you know, Band Up is a music company as well as a tech company. Um, so it's, you know, when, when we look to employ someone or look to take a, a new team member on, it's, you know, their, their background needs to be within music as well. So we all understand, hopefully, what, what, what an artist needs yeah. or what a festival needs. Um, and, and from that mindset, we, 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 we can kind of gauge what services we need to pull in and what services we should leave out. Um, and the new version of Band App will have ticketing services. It will have Songkick and stuff like that integrated and stuff that bands really need, you know. And, and, um, and we'll, leave it, we'll, we'll leave out the stuff that bands don't need. And, um, I think the biggest thing for us was, um, we, you know, we, we want Band App to be a place where you, you come and, and you make content and you push content out. But yeah, we're yeah. also really worried that, you know, that's not going to happen overnight. And we need to be a place that self aggregates and pulls things in. And the new version of Band App does that a lot more. So V2 will pull virtually everything in. You can create a Band App in three steps. Yeah. Uh, and then you can go in deeper and obviously, you know, really get involved in the design side of it and tweak it. But uh, if you want, if you're on the go, within three steps, you've got a Band App that just pulls in from all your stuff, yeah, um, yeah. which is important. And it's taken us a while to get our stuff involved, but the new version will do that. And then we'll see an awful lot more activity as, as Band Apps. Um, self-generate, I suppose. Yeah, yeah sure. Forward. Absolutely. And it's, you know, there's a big opportunity there also for, uh, it's an interesting uh, place for all sorts of content creators to actually refer back to, especially if they work on the audio front like I do. So uh, I've actually created a, a band app, if anybody wants to check it out. It's, uh, uh, you can ch search for Digital Music Trends on bandapp.com and I'll be sure to update it a little bit as well to make it look a bit nicer. Uh, <laughs> so there's a few customized banners and stuff that I can I can create now, so, uh, so that's great. And uh, uh, finally, of course, uh, there's the monetization question that I always ask uh, 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 sort of towards the end of my interview. We'll be talking about a free app, of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, aside from that, what are the uh, plan plans for the company and how do you monetize uh, with additional features, for example? Yeah, I think, I mean, for us, you know, we, we, I, I never wanted Band App to be a premium service or a, a freemium service. So yeah. there's never going to be a, a, a free, a free to use version or a free trial. And then there's going to be a really cool, you know, thing that costs you $15 a month. Yeah. It's always going to be free. Um, it's always going to be free to bands. It's always going to be free to fans. Um, and what we want to do, we, 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 we think there's a, there's a major gap on mobile. There's a major, this, someone needs to really take the music community by the scruff of its neck on mobile. And we don't think MySpace particularly did it well. The new version of MySpace looks great, but I've never really gone to it on mobile. And yeah. I don't think anybody that has yet. And also, we think you know, Spotify works really well on desktop. And the activity is really cool on Spotify. I love the way they've done that. But on mobile, you've got to pay for it to work on mobile. So that's missing. And, um, and we, we think the Power Band app is about building this big community of music fans um, it's when you go on a date, it's generally the second or third question you ask someone, yeah. you know, where they're from, what they're doing for a job, what kind of music they're into and music connects everyone as we know. And, and so for us, it's really important that we build the biggest community of like-minded music fans, talking to each other, talking to artists, using our ecosystem that we control. And then we think we're in a really powerful place to, to have a real good e-commerce platform that not only benefits our artists, but also benefits us as a business and also benefits advertisers. And when I say advertisers, I include our users in that. So we'd like to get to a stage where a band can run its own campaign through a band app, just like on Facebook. Um, so we're not just going to have the big brands. We're allowing bands to reach other fans and then potentially run campaigns through a band app. And that's one of the things we're really looking at. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, making sure we've got the biggest community possible, making sure it's a real valid community that's talking about about stuff that people want to hear about, so people are reconnecting and going back in every day. And then we think it's got a real, it, it's, it becomes a really powerful tool for a band that's releasing an EP or is releasing a tour or is about to put something on sale or just wants to share some t shirts. Yeah. So instead of use Facebook and Twitter and everything else that's out there, use Band App for it. And all the tools will be there for them to go and sell their wares and market themselves on Band App. That, that's what we're really aiming for. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, we're not looking at bringing advertising in at all per se. Um, the, we, we've got our own kind of marketing tool, which is called Brand App, where a brand can make an app and then we can place that into people's Band App streams. Yeah, um, yeah. But the, between that and the e-commerce e side of it, we think there's a, a, an incredible platform for monetizing and, and um, you know, really monetizing. That's great. 
That's we awesome. want to make sure that we, I think, you know, we want to make sure we sort of own the conversation, I guess is what I'm saying. So, okay. it's, you know, when we're nearly there. Okay. It takes a while. Yeah. <laughs> It always does. It always does. Well, thanks so much, Adam. Uh, it was great talking to you. And again, it's uh, bandapp.com. Uh, thanks so much for being on the show. Yeah, thank you very much. Yep. And uh, thanks for listening. Uh, Digital Music Trans uh, is available on digitalmusictrans.com. You can also check out the weekly news show that we record on Wednesday and usually comes out on a Thursday night or Friday morning. Uh, thanks for, so much for listening. And I'm going to leave you with a word from our sponsors. Thank you. Here with uh, Tahir Bashir uh, this week from uh, Sheridan's, and we're going to talk about uh, artists and contracts. And so, contracts are central to an artist's career, whether it's a management deal, a, a label deal, or anything like that. And how do you help them navigate through these agreements and help them understand them? Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of contracts are quite complicated, and, and uh, whilst uh, artists nowadays are more commercially savvy than they have ever been, uh, you know, you are still talking about legal agreements and how they fit together. So, if you've got an artist now who's uh, a musician, but also has other interests, yeah. uh, so maybe fashion, maybe TV, maybe film, maybe endorsements, you've got to make sure that your contracts all fit in together. It's like a matrix of arrangements. So, the first things first is making sure that artists understand what they're entering into so having the skill to be able to explain things in layman's terms and simple terms and give a bit of guidance around those yeah sure and artists can be quite intimidated by you know the amount of clauses and and decisions they have to make around the deal and so uh, they might have a lot of questions and uh, so how approachable are lawyers and I know that artists can be quite intimidated by having to deal with uh, uh, with a law firm and having to call an office and everything like that is are you quite approachable in that sense I hope so. We're human beings. We're not. We're not uh, demons. Um, I mean, other uh, other lawyers may uh, you know shy away from uh, you know being a bit less formal. But you know, in this industry, we're surrounded by creatives. All, all of our clients are creatives. So ultimately, you have to be approachable. So you know, we don't wear necessarily wear suits and just generally try and talk in you know relaxed, um, engaging terms. Um, so it's important that uh, you know artists feel comfortable with you because you know it's that old adage, no question is a silly question you want the art you know, the artist to be able to ask you questions yeah. and you need to be able to explain it to them in, in, in simple terms yeah sure and is it quite tough to uh, stand between uh, artists managers or labels when you are negotiating a deal is there a lot of uh, Toing and froing, uh, trying to get the best deal you can for your artist. There can be, yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the idea is to try and simplify and shrink all of those negotiations as much as you can. Because obviously, the longer it runs, the more momentum you lose from a deal, the more expensive it gets. Yeah. So the idea is to try and shrink it all together. And you know, once you've got, uh, when you've got enough experience, you can deal with things over the phone, you can have meetings, it doesn't always have to be email toing and froing. Sure. Uh, and also uh, a good experienced music lawyer should be able to help an artist make decisions and not just effectively be there to wait for the artist to tell them what to do. Yeah. So you know, you should be able to guide them and say, well, you know, I think you should be doing this based on what I've seen, this is reasonable, this is not reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Awesome, thank you and till next week. If you enjoyed the show, remember to check out our weekly music tech news show on digitalmusictrans.com.